we will kick this off. So good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica Janino, and I'm so honored to be here with you tonight with the Admi Tech Foundation to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart and to my family, and that is prostate cancer awareness. Um, the Admi Tech Foundation has done so much for our state in terms of advocacy and research and uh, resources for my constituents and people across the state when it comes to prostate cancer, early detection, resources, and awareness. Um, I look forward to this Zoom meeting every single year in this event because it brings much needed information and resources to my constituents uh, from the Admi Tech Foundation that have been such a wonderful partner for my office. So I want to thank Dr. Stern and the Admi Tech Foundation for always being ready and available to meet with my office and my constituents and for all the amazing resources that you offer uh, for us. Thank you. And um, particularly, uh, as many of you know, this is really near and dear to my heart because in 2017, we lost my grandfather to prostate cancer. And something that I've talked a lot about is um, how this impacts our firefighters. And something that as this has gone on every year that we've really included into this um, briefing is our local fire departments. So I'm um, honored to be joined tonight, um, not only by my colleagues. So we have Taylor from Senator Crichton's office on, I know uh, Representative Turco and Mayor Keefe were unable to make it, but I want to thank them for always being such great partners. Um, but you're going to hear from Captain Kevin O'Hara from the Revere Fire Department. He's the president of Local 926, which is the Re Revere Fire Department Union, um, who's going to talk a little bit about why this is so important uh, to our firefighters and why early detection and awareness and really making sure our firefighters know about the resources that are available when it comes to prostate cancer um, is so critical because it's something that is absolutely an occupational hazard. It's something that we know impacts firefighters more than other careers. Um, we're also um, really lucky to be supported by Saugus Union. Um, Captain Cross couldn't join us tonight, he's hosting a training, uh, but did send his regards. And we're really lucky to always have the support of both Revere and Saugus. But we are joined by Captain O'Hara. So Captain, thank you for taking the time to always make this a priority and to always be there for your members. Um, so I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you, uh, Representative Janino. Um, for all of you who don't know me, I'm Kevin O'Hara. I'm president of Revere Local 96 Union. I'm a captain on the job. I'm on my 21st year, Revere Fire. And um, I'm so honored to be here. I'm so glad that we're starting to, you know, pick up the fight. And our fight's getting stronger. As you can see, we got a cancer bill passed a few years ago. We're hoping to add a little more language to that, too, as well, to cover the guys after they retire. So, um, you know... I've been on 21 years, and each year that I go on, I, I get on longer and longer, I'm starting to recognize that guys are coming down with cancer. Just last week, we got another guy, 14-year veteran, 42 years old, cancer. And um, it's just, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's scary. It's scary. And, and what we do at the station now is we're, we're all over. As soon as we're done with the fire, we're getting in the shower, we're washing our body, we're washing our gear. I mean, we're doing everything we can to prevent anything that enters our body. And still, our gear carries the chemicals. The carcinogens are still in there after we wash it because of the way the gear is made. So, um, you know, we even went as far as taking the Teflon pans out of the station. So we're doing everything we can to protect ourselves. And this is, you know, we, we got to get strong with this fight because it's one of three firefighters that are getting cancer. One in three. Prostate, I think, is the leading, in the, the number one besides the lungs. And as Jessica mentioned earlier, you know, a grandfather passed away from prostate cancer. My father got double lung cancer. They worked together, and they didn't have bunker pants when they got on the job. They had a long jacket. They were told to wear jeans and high boots, and that exposed that whole, whole area, your whole entire hip area. And what happens when you get prostate? It's, the, it's a direct contact right to your lungs, and those are the two leading causes of cancer. So, you know... You know, Jessica, uh, Representative Janino, I really know I'm so happy they're putting up this fight and we're here still talking about it. Thank you, Captain, and thank you for always being there for your membership and thank you for always supporting um, the City of Revere Fire Department, uh, my constituents, and always being a resource for anyone that's going through this and um, know that we're always here for you too. And if you do have any members that uh, need additional resources, the Admi Tech Foundation has been my partner in this is a great resource. Um, you know, they talk a lot about early detection, about screening, but they also have resources for people that are going through this um, battle. So just want to offer that up. But thank you for taking the time to be here with us tonight. It really means a lot. Yeah, and I appreciate you, you know, you know getting this going. 
And, um, you know, hopefully in the future, the early detection is part of the job. We could have a screen in every year, every two years. I know where a lot of guys are paying out of pocket. We, you know, we're, I'm always advising my membership. Guys, listen, you know, get, you know get, check your, you know, get your prostate done, get your colon done. You know, we do everything. I'm always all over trying to tell the guys every day. Because when I first got on the job, you know, there was, it was, we didn't talk about cancer. You didn't talk about protection. You know, they were telling you, take your mask off, save your ear when you're inside the fire. You know, we're doing, and now we're doing the complete opposite. And, you know, my generation has gotten better, but we have the young kids who wash their gear constantly. We got it into their head. So now we're making it better. Now we just need early detection, you know, to hopefully, you know, take off for us. Well, thank you. And thank you, Kevin. Thanks for being here and, and for sharing that. And I think, you know, we're lucky that every year we come a little bit further. I know that years ago there weren't even, you know, washers and dryer for your gear in the no, state. <laughs> and, and now we have, you know, those resources. And now, you know, every year we're getting a little bit better. Now, you know, the, the uh, state just passed the ban on PFAS and gear and we're working yep. on that huge piece of legislation that uh, Speaker Mariano and 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 the house just you know moved through so that was a huge thing to be a part of and uh, every year we're getting a little bit closer but um there's still so many hazards that you guys are facing every single day that's not just fires uh so thank you for what you're doing and thank you again for, for really taking the time to emphasize how important this is and um just know that again we have so many resources so i really appreciate you taking the time to be here no, and thank you and uh, i'm going to stay on all, long as long as possible uh, my daughter's game does start at seven. So if you see me check out, you know, that's the only reason why I'm getting off, you know, because, you know, family first, always. So always All right. thank you for that. Thank you, the representative. And thank everybody for um, who joined as well. Thank you. Well, as you heard from our firefighters, you know, this is such an important issue, not just in the fire service, but for our men in general. And I think something so important to that is as the women in their lives that we remind them how important it is to follow up with your regular appointments, to follow up with your regular care. And I think during COVID, so many of us postponed those regular screenings and those regular preventative treatments and maintenance. And now that we've come through that part, uh, it's really important to make sure that we're staying on top of our colonoscopies and above, on top of our uh, preventative care and maintenance. Um, early detection, as Dr. Stern will share with you, is key in this disease. And the earlier you find out, uh, the better your outcomes are. So uh, without further ado, I look forward to uh, getting further into our program and learning more about uh, Admitech Foundation and some new updates that we have since the last time we hosted this Zoom. And as always, the Admitech Foundation has some wonderful guests with us and some wonderful presentations. So this evening, um, Dr. Sean Wason is unable to join us, but he did provide a video presentation with some additional information. Uh, he is a faculty member of the Division of Urology Associated Physician of Harvard Medical um, and the Milton Center for Specialized Care uh, in Needham Urology Associates, also affiliated with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, Beth Israel Leahy Health, and Harvard Medical School. Um, he's going to review advances in screening and uh, diagnostics. So we're very lucky to have some amazing physicians who are going to share additional information with uh, very detailed backgrounds in uh, urology and in this care and cancer treatment. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over. To My name is Sean Wason, and I'm a faculty member in the Division of Urology at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. I primarily work out of Milton and Needham Hospitals, and I'm a part-time lecturer at Harvard Medical School. I was asked to give a talk on advances in the screening and diagnosis of prostate cancer. I have no disclosures related to this talk. We all may know someone that's been affected by prostate cancer. For me, it was my grandfather, Ernest Wason, who grew up in the sunny island of Barbados, the easternmost Caribbean island. I dedicate this talk to him. The objectives of my talk are to review the goals of screening, who do we screen, when do we screen, how do we make the diagnosis, and how are we using imaging and biomarkers to screen our patients. Typical patient that may present to me in my office for prostate cancer screening. He's a middle-aged male. He has a strong family history of prostate cancer. Notably, his grandfather died of metastatic prostate cancer, and he has a brother who was recently diagnosed with localized prostate cancer and is undergoing treatment. He has no significant voiding symptoms. He feels well. He works out frequently. He does have well-controlled hypertension, and he takes 
medications for this and a statin for his elevated cholesterol. He drinks alcohol occasionally. He doesn't smoke. He's married and his erections are normal. He was noted to have a relatively normal digital rectal exam that was round, smooth, slightly enlarged, but his PSA was 4.5 nanograms per milliliter. I like to review the prostate anatomy with patients. The prostate is typically the size of a walnut, measures about 30 grams, and is part of the urethral channel. It's tucked in between the bladder and the rectum, and the backside of the prostate can be palpated by performing a digital rectal exam. The function is a reproductive organ, and it contributes to semen. What we do know is that prostate cancer is common. It affects one in eight men in the United States. If detected early, the five-year survival rate is nearly 100%. The goals with prostate cancer screening are to minimize the detection of non-life-threatening cancers and maximize the detection of intermediate and high-grade cancers, as well as decrease the unneeded biopsies and treatments. As established by the American Urologic Association on the early detection of prostate cancer. What we mean by early detection is screening, and both imply detection of a disease at an early pre-symptomatic stage when a man would have no other reason to seek medical care. The panel recommends against PSA screening in men less than the age of 40. In this age group, there is a low prevalence of clinically de detectable prostate cancer. The panel also does not recommend routine screening in men over the age of 70 unless they are in excellent health and they may benefit from screening. The panel strongly recommends shared decision-making for men in between the ages of 55 and 69 with either a primary care physician or urologist, and then proceeding with screening based on a man's values and preferences. How do we find prostate cancer? The two most common ways are a blood test measuring PSA or prostate-specific antigen, as well as a digital rectal exam. Screening is best performed when these two are taken in combination. Typically, PSA and digital rectal exam are done annually for screening, but this does not tell you if someone has prostate cancer. You need a prostate biopsy in order to make the diagnosis. PSA stands for prostatic-specific antigen. It's a protein in the semen that liquefies the ejaculate. It circulates in the blood of all men with intact prostates. The good news is PSA is only made by the prostate. However, prostate levels can be elevated for several reasons, such as inflammation, trauma, or natural enlargement as men age. I think a lot of men need to know what is your PSA and what is the trend? What is the velocity? How quickly is it rising? One of the earliest known biomarkers used in urology. It's used in several phases of the disease, including screening, diagnosis, after local treatment, in advanced, as well as metastatic disease. In regards to PSA screening, from a urologist's perspective, most would agree that mass screening is in the past. PSA does have several limitations. It's not a definitive test for prostate cancer. Shared decision-making is important. High-risk patients, such as those with first-degree relatives, and family members should be considered for screening. Age and comorbidities will often dictate who gets screened, which is also dictated by primary care providers. Who gets biopsied and diagnosed is often dictated by urologists. The National Comprehensive Cancer Center also has their guidelines on the early detection of prostate cancer. If a PSA is less than one nanogram per milliliter and there is a normal digital rectal exam, Repeat testing can occur at longer intervals. If a PSA is in between one and three with a normal digital rectal exam, repeat testing should occur at one to two year intervals. If a PSA is greater than three or there's a suspicious nodule on digital rectal exam, the PSA should be repeated and this patient referred for possible biopsy. In these patients, we would consider the use of multiparametric MRI as well as biomarkers. If there remains a high suspicion for prostate cancer, these patients should undergo prostate needle biopsy. If there's a low suspicion for prostate cancer, the PSA and digital rectal exam can be repeated at a shorter interval. In my practice, I often use transabdominal ultrasounds to determine the size of the patient's prostate. 
By taking the PSA divided by the prostate size, we can determine the PSA density. The denser the prostate is, the more concern there is for prostate cancer biomarkers available for risk stratification in patients with suspected or known prostate cancer. Biomarkers are biologic molecules typically found in blood, urine, or tissue that can be used as a marker of normal or abnormal processes within the body. Biomarkers can be used in all aspects of patient care. They can be done before a biopsy, prior to repeat prostate biopsy, after biopsy, or post-treatment. Biomarkers should, however, not be routinely used in all patients. We use Select MDX, which is a urine-based biomarker in my practice. I will use this for patients that have had a negative prostate biopsy in the past. Those patients with a very large prostate with a smaller concern for prostate cancer, and those patients that may be in the gray zone or hesitant to proceed with prostate biopsy. The assay looks for two genes, Hox C6 and DLX1, that have been shown to be associated with prostate cancer. The findings associated with the digital rectal exam, the PSA, the patient's age, and the prostate size are combined into a report that tells us the likelihood of finding prostate cancer upon biopsy, as well as more importantly, the likelihood of detecting a clinically significant prostate cancer, which is considered a Gleason 7 or greater. I will also typically use multiparametric MRI frequently in my practice. In patients considering a prostate biopsy, all patients will undergo a multiparametric MRI, which stands for magnetic resonance imaging. There are several sequences performed in the MRI, and we can evaluate the MRI for suspicious areas within the prostate if there is evidence of extracapsular extension, seminal vesicle involvement, lymph node involvement, or possible bony metastasis. The radiologist will give us a score, PIRAD score, from one to five. And I think it's extremely important for men to know, what does my MRI show? Does it show any PIRADs, four or five lesions? And where are the lesions? PIRAD stands for Prostate Imaging Scoring and Data Systems. This is a standardized set of imaging characteristics used by radiologists across the country to classify lesions and abnormalities noted on prostate MRI. The higher the PIRAD score, the higher likelihood of finding clinically significant prostate cancer. Another imaging modality that is currently being employed is micro-ultrasound. This is a high-resolution ultrasound probe that provides real-time images similar to a standard transrectal ultrasound. This can be used in both the initial biopsy phase and the surveillance phase on patients diagnosed with prostate cancer. The images provided by micro-ultrasound are far superior and can provide detailed local anatomy. It also has a very similar scoring system to the PIRADS system called PRIMUS. The higher the number on the PRIMUS score, the higher likelihood of finding clinically significant prostate cancer. Prostate biopsy is typically performed transrectally, and the goal is to sample the peripheral zone of the prostate. On average, 12 cores are taken six on either side in the peripheral zone of the prostate. The prostate biopsy will tell us, is there prostate cancer or not? What is the Gleason grade, which is the aggressiveness of the prostate cancer? Gleason 6 prostate cancers are the least aggressive, whereas Gleason 10 prostate cancers are the most aggressive. The prostate biopsy also estimates the volume of the cancer, the number of cores involved, what is the location and if there is perineural invasion, which is a poor prognostic indicator. There are two standard ways to perform a prostate biopsy. One is via the transperineal, and the other is via the transrectal route. Both are typically performed in the office under ultrasound guidance by a urologist. The added benefit of performing the transperineal biopsy is that anterior aspect of the prostate is more easily sampled. There may also be a slight decrease in the risk of infection via the transperineal route, although recent data is questioning this. Multiparametric MRI ultrasound fusion is a technique used to sample lesions noted on MRI. After the MRI is complete, the radiologist will encircle the lesion on the MRI, and then these images can be fused in real time to a standard transrectal or perineal ultrasound to ensure that the lesions that are noted on MRI are sampled 
as prostate cancer can be found 15 to 20 percent of the time in other areas of the prostate without a lesion usually the fusion guided biopsy are also performed with the standard 12 core needle biopsy after the prostate is sampled the cores are all sent to a pathologist for evaluation and are given a gleason grade which ranges from 6 to 10 10 being more aggressive patient needs to know what is my current gleason score once we know the gleason score the number of cores involved the psa the digital rectal exam finding the patients are given a risk category ranging from very low low intermediate high and very high risk this will determine the extent at which imaging studies need to be performed for evaluation of disease outside of the prostate in patients with low and favorable intermediate risk disease genomic biomarkers can be performed on tissue removed at the time of biopsy this will determine the biologic aggressiveness of the prostate cancer this is useful for patients considering active surveillance in patients found to have unfavorable intermediate risk high risk and very high risk disease should undergo additional imaging to ensure that there's no metastatic disease or disease outside of the prostate traditional imaging includes ct scan of the abdomen and pelvis as well as a bone scan although ct and bone scan are still widely being used for imaging slowly this is being supplanted by a more sensitive test called psma pet scan psma stands for prostate specific membrane antigen this is a protein found on the surface of most prostate cancer cells. A radio labeled pharmaceutical agent is tagged to PSMA. The whole body is scanned, and this will easily identify areas outside of the prostate where there may be prostate cancer metastasis. After a diagnosis of prostate cancer, many men will ask, how can I be proactive in my fight against prostate cancer? One of the fathers of prostate cancer treatment is Professor Laurie Klotz from the University of Toronto. He recommends smoking cessation, consider a low dose statin, vitamin D supplementation, as well as metformin. In summary, prostate cancer is common and its aggressiveness is quite variable. Earlier detection is favorable and can lead to a cure a lot of the time. Our goal with prostate cancer screening is to maximize detection of intermediate, high, and lethal cancers minimize the detection of non-life-threatening cancers. We can do this with improved imaging and genomics, which can improve risk stratification. This has also allowed urologists and patients to be more comfortable with active surveillance. Thank you for your attention. We are, we are grateful to Dr. Wason for providing the video, although he sends his uh, regrets that he will not be able to join us today. While uh, Dr. Wason presented advances in screening and, and diagnosis of prostate cancer, I will focus in my presentation on prostate cancer equity program that was established by Agnita Foundation with support of Representative Janina, uh, Janina Representative Tarka, uh, Senator um, uh, Crichton, and many others, uh, many other members of the Massachusetts uh, State House. Uh, Massachusetts General Court. Um, I usually uh, present my presentation by video uh, in order to avoid technical difficulties, and I would like to ask uh, my team members to demonstrate the video. My name is uh, Faina Stern. I am grateful to Representative Giannino for the opportunity to present this prostate cancer awareness event. Admitac Foundation is a non-profit organization leading regional, national, and global programs in prostate cancer education, research, public awareness, advocacy, and clinical care equity. Dr. Sean Wason described recent advances in patient care. The main topic of my presentation is our prostate cancer equity program and its mission to bring this cutting edge advances in screening, diagnosis, and treatment to Massachusetts men and eliminate health disparities. Prostate Cancer Equity Program is an integral part of the Admitex ongoing statewide program in prostate cancer that created 
a Massachusetts model of national leadership in public awareness, medical education, and research, and clinical care equity. We are grateful to Representative Giannino and other members of the Suffolk County delegation to the State House for serving as champions of our program. Our primary focus is on high risk men, Black, Hispanic, and Latino individuals, and all men with family history of prostate cancer and increasing age, 50 and older. This program was initially since 2013 in collaboration with multiple organizations and has four components, public awareness community education, prostate cancer equity and clinical care, medical education, and research. Our public awareness campaign, community education and outreach, is focused on the most vulnerable and underserved individuals. Since January 2023, we reached over 15,000 underprivileged individuals. This is a 50% increase compared to what we reported last year. Since 2019, our public awareness and education program reached over 52,000 people. For public awareness and education, our messaging is centered on the importance of screening and early detection critical for saving lives. Early detection is particularly important for Black, including Hispanic men, who are 2.5 times more likely to die compared to white men. This early detection of prostate cancer, every man is alive in five years. In sharp contrast, this late diagnosis, when cancer is spread to other organs, only 28% of men remain alive at the same time. The center of our medical education is Advitec's annual global summit on precision diagnosis and treatment of prostate cancer. The latest seventh annual conference took place in September last year. Our summit has been recognized as a seminal event in shaping the state of the art and future vision for patient care. Our summit brings together the key international experts representing every clinical expertise to review the best emerging clinical practices and research priorities. Last September, we had over 300 physicians participating during this event. After the event, our media partners published over 60 scientific presentations and reached over 35,000 physicians across the globe. It's difficult to find any corner of the world that has not been reached by this event. Our summit showed that equal access to high quality care is the key factor in improving patient outcomes for all men and eliminating health disparities in black men. It is particularly important now with so many novel diagnostics and therapeutic approaches ensuring high quality, personalized, precision patient care. Without equal access to these advances in patient care, we will see a widening gap in health inequalities, including survival and mortality. Consequently, Admitec launched the Prostate Cancer Equity Program in Massachusetts in collaboration with Mass General Brigham, UMass, and other clinical institutions with the mission to save lives and deliver high-quality care to all. Supporting organizations include Latino Health Insurance Program and multiple NACP branches located across the state. Any Massachusetts man age 40 and older can participate. Our priority focus is on Black, Hispanic, and Latino men who are at higher risk of prostate cancer, delayed diagnosis, poor quality care, and death. Our goal is to expedite access to leading experts who use the most advanced approaches to screening, diagnosis, and treatment available today and to support men every step of their medical journey. This program helps men to find an expert for the initial or a second opinion in person or virtual visits. 
we strongly believe that our prostate cancer equity program, integrated with our large-scale public awareness campaign, has been placing Massachusetts in a strong position to become the first state in our country to eliminate health disparities. Experts of the prostate cancer equity program can address any questions about prostate health. From assessing an individual healthy man's personal risk of cancer, to informing men about all available options before and after screening, biopsies, and treatment. They are committed to supporting men during every step of their medical journey to ensure that no man is left behind or struggling alone. To achieve this goal, we created a streamlined BAP style process of patient referral and care, reflecting how doctors involved in this program take care of their families and friends. This process consists of three components. One, Admitech Foundation's team members collect basic information and match individual patients' needs with the appropriate state experts for clinical care. Two, a clinical organization designates a patient navigator to expedite a medical visit and related needs, including scheduling, registration, transportation, any insurance and financial assistance if needed. Three, if an expert recommends any next steps, Admitex team and patient navigator work with men on the appropriate follow-up, such as testing, or treatment. I'd like to share with you a few recent examples of how prostate cancer equity program has been making a difference. This is a case of a black man with a history of prostate cancer who is currently being treated. On May 15, his doctor informed him that his scheduled treatment could not be provided due to problems with the insurance coverage. He got upset and shared his situation with Representative Bud Williams and a leader of the Men of Color Health Awareness Program, MOCA, our community partner in Springfield, who referred him to us. In the late afternoon of May 26, right before the memorial weekend, he contacted us and appealed for help. Our primary goal was to restore his treatment as soon as possible. And we immediately reached out to Dr. Mitchell Sokolov and his team at UMass and secured their support. On May 30th, right after Memorial Day, UMass Urology provided guidance to this man how to address his insurance. By Friday the same week, on June 2nd, the insurance issue has been resolved and the appointment with Dr. Sokolov was scheduled at the earliest opportunity in early July to resume his treatment. The following Monday on June 5, a local leader heard about what happened and asked for a second opinion for his own urologic health issue. And I received an appointment with a leading urologic expert within a few days of his request. This is a story of a black man in his mid-50s who was referred to us in mid-May by Cambridge and ACP. This man was recently diagnosed with prostate cancer. He got alarmed when his urologist informed him that the best care will not be available to him due to his limited insurance. We connected him right away with uh, the patient navigator at the Mass General Brigham. She obtained a referral from his primary care physician and secured approval from his insurance. Three weeks later, by June 6, this man saw Dr. Adam Feldman, a leading clinical expert and one of our featured physicians. Dr. Feldman described various treatment options, but recommended curative surgery, which was performed in mid-August. We asked a few men to share their experience with prostate cancer equity program. The first video you will see in a few minutes was provided by Jose Javier of Lawrence, Massachusetts. And the second video features Ken Reeves, president, Cambridge and AACP. 
and breast cancer survivor. My name is Jose Javier. Uh, first, let me begin by thanking Dr. Stern uh, for inviting me here today and being part of this. I'm excited to share with you and grateful to be able to share with you for a few minutes a little bit about my story and my experience uh, with Amentech and the organization. Uh, I met Dr. Stern around the fall of 2015. I heard about her from a friend of mine at church, uh, Victor McCann, which I'm grateful for, because he was going through the same thing, and uh, he was able to share at church, and I heard his testimony, and I was able to approach him after the service, and we had a great conversation. I was very shy about this subject, I, too, had a very high count of my PSA exam and had to go in for a biopsy. And I learned from uh, Victor McCain the difference between an MRI biopsy, a guided biopsy, and also what is referred to as a blind biopsy. And those made a difference in my life. And I was able to meet Dr. Stern through this process. And I was able to, to go in and get a MRI guided biopsy at the NIH and so forth, and it was a f fantastic experience for me. So for me, uh, part of the takeaway when it comes to this is really to be aware. Uh, be aware, learn about the processes, learn what's available out there, what programs are available for you, what are the best tools uh, to do the job. In a very important thing is to share it. That's what I learned from my friend Victor, is to share, share it at church, share it with other people so they can learn as well, and because in this, in our community, especially in the Black American community and the Latino community, it's, it's, it's a subject that is not often spoke about. When we talk about our private parts and speaking about the prostate, it's not always a conversation that is, that is too welcoming in our community. So I would encourage people to share it, to learn. And as, as, as Governor Baker always says, get tested. You know, it's easy to get tested. Ask your doctor for a test and be aware and that there are solutions out there. Contact, we have great referrals, we have great doctors, and contact the, 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 the leadership, the people at Amentech, and they're able to guide you in the right direction. Thank you. Please allow me to say a few words in Spanish. Eh, para nuestra comunidad en español, este tema de cáncer en la próstata es un tema super serio, muy serio, y es un tema que nos impacta a nuestra comunidad significantemente. Eh, yo le, le quiero, eh, le quería decir a ustedes que, por favor, hablen con su médico. Si sienten algún síntoma, si están teniendo problemas orinando, cualquier irregularidades, hablen con su médico. No tengan miedo de conversar con su médico. Hablen con personas que tienen experiencias similares y eso le puede salvar su vida. Lo más importante es hacerse un examen PSA. Por favor, estudienlo bien y aprendan más. My name is Kenneth Reeves. I am the president of the Cambridge branch of the NAACP, as well as the former mayor of the city of Cambridge, Massachusetts. My intention is to say a word about the Admitech Foundation and its offerings and benefits, particularly to communities of color and particularly to Black men facing issues with respect to prostate cancer. I would say that in Cambridge, we've been in the men of color health business for more than 25 years. And so we have a men of color health outreach. However, I think we've become uh, much more knowledgeable about ways in which we can assist the men of our city. And we particularly have become much more knowledgeable about prostate cancer and its impact on particularly black men who are five times as likely to be affected by prostate cancer than white men. So that being the case, and I, I would, uh, prostate cancer theoretically. And then four years ago, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. So I had my own journey. And after diagnosis, I was able to hear what my treatment options were. And I chose something called Cyber Night, which is a six day treatment uh, where you go every day for about an hour. Uh, there is a, a laser approach to the, the cancer. And after that, I was able to be clear for almost two years. And then suddenly my PSA or prostate specific antigen number kept going up, 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 and no one could figure out why. And I had many MRIs and other tests. 
And that's when I met Advitech because I was describing this to a friend and they said, you sounds like you're lost in the maze of, you know, what to do when your numbers are inexplicable. So I was in touch with our Dr. Stern and uh, basically I had to tell her there is a test that they don't have in Boston that I need to have it's an imaging test it's a very uh advanced it's in europe but not yet approved by the fda and she said i'll get it for you and she was able to arrange it through sloan kettering in new york so after much red tape and bureaucracy and i was able to get that imaging test and sh it did find where the prostate cancer had moved to area around my lung, which my doctor, who's a very important, famous department head at Dana-Farber, said he had only seen one case in his career, so he was pretty sure it wasn't to the lung. So I then learned that, you know, the physicians are great, but they're not God. So I called him and said, guess what? I'm number two. And after being number two, I still have had to have these various questions that I don't feel competent to answer about what next steps should be in my medical care. So while I'm, I have a wonderful team at uh, Dame Farber, who uh, Dr. Stern led me to, but even in all that wonderfulness, uh, there are questions that I don't feel competent to answer. So she just two days ago helped me to answer two great big questions. So I think this is timely for you to hear. That in my big questions were whether I should participate in a particular study, which would, uh, I'm now on a very expensive pill uh, that has my uh, PSA number at zero 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 zero. So this is sixteen thousand dollars a month. And the question asked of me by my doctor is, would I would participate in a trial, which would essentially stop this pill, let the cancer come back, and then observe what that does with respect to the testosterone level. And the doctor also said, well, you know, we don't get many black men in trials, so we'd like to get. Uh, you, you, it would be important if you were to say yes. And so this was hanging over my head like a cloud. I couldn't decide because I want to do whatever I can do that will be helpful to both science and to prostate cancer with respect to black men because uh, self-interest is a wonderful motivator. Her immediate reaction was not for you because you had a, one of only two cases with your particular doctor the experience with people like you for such a trial is too small and so you should be very thankful to the doctor but it's not for you thank god for having a foundation that's devoted to navigating men of color through the maze of prostate cancer to be able, with a scientific point of view, give that kind of direction and consultation. So I, I must say that is great. I also got to talk to her about the second thing, it had to do with neuropathy. And so I went to a neuropathy doctor who was uh, the head of neuropathy at, at uh, the Brigham and at Dana-Farber. I got a clean bill of health, meaning that whatever neuropathy I have is appropriate for my age and for um, my uh, diabetic status. But then Dr. Stern uh, introduced the issue of vascular. The, the, the neuropathy is basically your hands and feet. The vascular is the veins in your legs going down to feet. She just, just suggested, well, you know, maybe you want to see a vascular person too to get the fullest picture of what's going on with the circulation. Trust me, I, I have a lot of education and a lot of good exposures, but I think what Admatech is offering is the possibility to get the best advice for the best care possible at this time. And I want all men of color in Massachusetts to have that. So I couldn't recommend this program more highly based on my own personal experience and those people who I can recommend. This is my story and my soul.
uh, uh, but I, I must say that I have been very much helped by the advice and direction and management of Advertec. Emma Cunha serves as a manager of the Plastic Cancer Equity Program. Emma is assisted by Erin Roberts, Program Coordinator, Brett McClay, a patient educator, and other members of the Admitted Foundation's team. When you come to us, Emma will work with you, our team, must join Brigham, you must, and other clinical partners to expedite medical visits and address any needs you may have. Our team may not be able to right every social wrong that cannot be resolved by federal or state government or provide perfect solutions for every man. And yet, we are committed to doing our best and making sure men are not left behind or struggling alone. If you have any questions about our program or need assistance, please contact Emma by phone, 617-523-3535, or by email, coordinator at foundation.org. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Stern. And I really want to take a moment to just thank Dr. Stern, who is the president and CEO of the AdmiTech Foundation, for her outstanding advocacy and dedication to this cause, because she is a champion not only in this space and in this this world of prostate cancer, but in the state house and with our colleagues who I'm so lucky to be joined by my partner in the city of Riviera, Representative Jeff Turco. I know in the beginning I gave him a shout out, but I want to acknowledge him and thank him for taking the time to be here with us tonight. Uh, Rep Turco has always been a strong advocate and supported me in um, my advocacy in prostate cancer research and early detection. So thank you Rep Turco again for making this a priority and for always being here. I appreciate you. And again, thank you to Senator Creighton's office for being here earlier. And I know Mayor Keefe uh, had a conflict. His office did offer to send a staffer on, but I said, nope, just share the live stream. And thank you for being here and always supporting. So we're really grateful to have all of the support from my partners in local and state government. Uh, so thank you. And Dr. Stern, I will hand it over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Representative Janina, Representative Terka. Thank you so much for your support that makes it possible for us to help people like Jose Javier or uh, uh, Mayor um, Reeves. Um, Jose described situation when uh, he was held by uh, uh, precision MRI uh, for his biopsy. At that time, Preci uh, precision MRI about 10 years ago was available only in a few institutions. One of our clinic, including NIH where we sent him uh, and NIH is a very important resource to us, um, not only because the uh, National Cancer Institute, not only because they offer the, what, some of the best world care available in prostate cancer, but, but also because they offer free care to any citizens of this country. So these are our backup option if if Massachusetts institutions cannot accept a citizen of this country for some reason who does not have su uh, sufficient insurance, uh, National Cancer Institute uh, is our safety net that will provide world care and they, um, they even reimburse uh, hotel stay, travel, etc., etc. So they absolutely support, they can support any citizen of this country. Um, it's a federal institution, so their um, limitation is that they cannot support uh, men who are not citizens, but at least we can help um, most people who come to us, uh, even if they do, do not have adequate insurance uh, for citizens. Uh, we pioneered prostate MRI in 1998. We developed the kind of tools and MRI standardized reporting, pilot standardization, uh, jointly with American College of Radiology and European colleagues, that right now is um, essentially a standard of care. Um, this was largely thanks to Massachusetts uh, State House, Massachusetts uh, General Court, that gave us funding in 2013 
when nobody else believed in MRI, when nobody else wanted to, 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 to support this research, so the, that we were able to do clinical trial that demonstrated the value of prostate MRI for men, and today it is a standard of care, thanks to clinical trial largely supported by Massachusetts uh, legislature. Uh, Mr. Reeves described another imaging tool that we pioneered in 1998, molecular imaging, PSMA imaging. Uh, so since 2016, we moved beyond imaging towards advancement of uh, a lot of diagnostic, precision diagnostic tools, molecular, genetic, et cetera, et cetera, that were discussed by uh, Dr. Sean Wason. So we are in a very strong position to know which institutions in this country can provide unique diagnostic and therapeutic approaches in this country and uh, Massachusetts and help men to get the best possible individualized precision care they need to have. So I would like to issue a call to action. We have prostate cancer equity program. It is a pioneering resource in providing high quality care, world leading quality of care to every man. Uh, if you need, if you have any questions, if you need any help, please contact us. Contact Emma Coyard, um, manager of the program at 617-523-3535. At this point, I will be happy to address any questions. Thomas, do we have any questions so far? Um, so far, not online. Okay, there are no questions. Great. No, I'll uh, just say yeah. anyone that might be watching after the fact, if you do have any questions, you can feel free to email my office and I can connect you with Dr. Stern and we're happy to do any follow-up. If you watch this after and you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you have any need for resources or need to be connected with the Admi Tech Foundation, and maybe you don't want to put it on Facebook, feel free to email my office, jessica.janino at mahouse.gov. We can connect you with Dr. Stern and the Admi Tech Foundation. Again, doctor, thank you for being such an incredible resource. We're so lucky to have you. Thank you so much for your support. Um, I would like to, once again, express my gratitude to Representative Jayanina, Representative Tarka, um, many others who are not uh, able to be here tonight. Uh, tonight. Please, I, I would like everyone to walk away from here knowing that we have a resource um, to provide the best care available today. Please do not hesitate to contact Representative Giannino. Please do not hesitate to contact Representative Terka, who can connect us, uh, who can uh, connect you to us, and do not uh, hesitate to contact Admitech Foundation directly about any questions. Are you a good candidate for screening? Is screening the right approach to you? Um, uh, do you have any concerns about your current care? Are you looking for a second opinion? Um, are you looking for initial assessment of your risk of prostate cancer? Uh, were you recommended biopsy? Uh, and you're wondering if you should have biopsy. Uh, our experts, um, were you recommended treatment and you're concerned about options that you were offered? If you are looking for initial assessment for a second opinion, we'll be happy help. And at this point, I, I would like to wish everyone a good evening and turn it over uh, to Representative Janina to wrap up. Thank you again, Dr. Stern. And again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, Dr. Stern, the Abney Tech Foundation for your amazing work and advocacy and everything that you do, uh, not only for your patients, but for uh, everyone and for advocating for us in Beacon Hill and educating uh, my colleagues and, and for everything that you do. We're so grateful to have you. Uh, to my colleagues that joined us tonight, Rep. Turco, Senator Crichton, thank you so much for being here. And uh, Mayor Keith, thank you for your support as well. We're very, very grateful. Um, also want to take a moment to thank my partners in uh, Revere and Saugus Fire, Captain O'Hara and Captain Cross. Thank you both for always taking the time to support this important cause. Um, Captain O'Hara, thank you for taking the time to join us this evening and share your thoughts and support uh, and for always being there for the men and women of Revere Fire and Captain Cross as well for always taking the time to uh, be such an important resource. And I know that even though they couldn't be here tonight, um, they're going to be sharing this with their departments and always offering this resource for anyone watching at home. So uh, thank you everyone for taking time to 
pay attention and to learn a little bit more about this. I know that it's not always the most pleasant topic to talk about when we talk about cancer and we talk about healthcare and we talk about preventative care, but it's important. And um, as someone that's lost someone to this awful disease, I can tell you that early detection matters, that your quality of life matters. When you detect this cancer early, you can live a very long time and it is treatable and there are options. So I think that um, the work that the Admi Tech Foundation is doing is just incredible. There are resources out there. And if you're struggling with this and uh, need some resources, please do not hesitate to reach out to my office. Uh, myself and Chris are always available as our Rep. Turco and Caitlin, Senator Crichton and his team, uh, Senator Edwards and her team, we're all here to support you. So again, Dr. Stern, you're the best. Thank you for your team for putting this together and for putting such amazing doctors and researchers and advocates here uh, as resources for our community. We are so lucky to have you. Once again, this is uh, an event that I look forward to every year. And uh, I'm really grateful that we could take some time to shine some light on this really important issue. So I leave you with this. Uh, don't postpone your regular appointments. Uh, early detection matters. So follow up with your doctors and uh, reach out if you need anything. Thank you and good evening.